Howdy peeps and welcome back to the channel for what will hopefully be a relatively short video today in comparison to some. Today I'm going to be talking about and explaining scales, uh, not weighing scales, um, but the model scales that we use. The, the main ones, some of the slightly tangential ones. As, okay, you guys who are experienced and in the hobby and have been for a while will <clears throat> probably know all this and understand everything but newcomers can find the various scales a bit confusing um, so I thought just sticking a mod uh, video out there explaining them might help some people you never know even if you are knowledgeable about it or you, you might eat, pick up a couple of little things you never know all right, so where do we start Let's start with planes and let's find one shall we find a wingy thing I've got a stack of kits here to demonstrate things Ooh. and the one I decide to start with is at the bottom of the stack as usual now what we most of us start out with is 170 second scale now I believe uh, well 176 is I think double O gauge which is the um, uh, blah, 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 train gauge scale and 172 not being far off I'm not entirely sure how that occurred but it did anyway it's being the most popular of scales despite most of us modelers preferring 148 or larger and what the scale means is, as you see there, 172 is that the model is 72 times smaller than the real thing or, and excuse me, being an old fart and working in Imperial if the real thing was 72 feet long the model would be 1 foot long and it scales according to all the various uh, dimensions etc so pretty much the bigger the second number the smaller the model is going to be in general now there are some kits that are in a smaller scale 1144 which is a really small scale but if you've got a really big plane like I did the uh, TU95 bear in 1144 that was still over 30 centimeters long or a foot long and wide so despite it being a really small scale it was a really big plane and to do something like that in 172 or 148 it's it's a monster so sometimes just the sheer size of the subject matter can affect the scale that manufacturers decide to use now obviously there are other scales and as I've mentioned in planes, we start with as I say, 172. Below that, there are the Tamiya 1 100th scales, which is a fairly small line. They don't do many of them. And it, I don't think anyone else actually does kits in this scale. But, you know, they're, they're not as small and fiddly as 1 144th. But they're not as big as a 172, and equally they're not as detailed. These are fairly old kits, even though they have had nice shiny new boxings. And if you give me the one I've forgotten to grab is 148, <laughs> um, which is the next size up from 172nd. Now that's also known as quarter scale. The reason behind that is that one inch in real life is a quarter of an inch in scale that's how that works as 1 48th of a foot is a quarter of an inch these things don't necessarily work with metric um, most of these scales were set out laid down and became known before metric happened at least in some parts of the world So that's the 148th, and above that, generally the biggest you'll find planes in is 132. Um, I believe there might be a couple of kits out there in 116th for particularly small planes, things like the Flea or gyrocopters, things like that. 
that's a general overview of aeroplane or wingy thingy scales. For some reason helicopters tend to go between the scales. Now you'll find, I, I don't really have any, I've got one up there that's in 172 which is you know, the commonest. But you'll find helicopters in 135th which is an armour scale generally and 148th as well so it all kind of depends. Now when it comes to armour Again, just some kits I randomly grabbed out of the stash. 135th, which, just up there, tiny little letters, is the most popular scale. No doubt about it. You do get 176, which, as I said, is the double uh, O gauge for plane modelers. It's pretty much just Airfix, I think, now that does 176 scale. There might be some resin and random ones like that. Uh, my, but most other small scale armour is in 172 rather than 176. The reason being to tie things together I guess and so that you can do a diorama with everything in the same scale. Now we get the same thing with the armour as well. We get a 48 scale. Again not a hugely popular scale because they are fairly small but in 148th again it does mean that you can put a diorama together with a tank and a plane on it um, for example that's the 148th scale Tamiya Matilda that I'm working on at the moment so teeny little thing but would fit in a diorama with a 148th aeroplane without having any weird scale issues Now, I did hear a rumour as to why 135th became the de facto for armour, and that is because, now, forgive me if this is incorrect, this is just what I've heard through the grapevine. I've heard it from a few different sources, so it may well be correct. What happened is Tamiya made their first armour kit. I forget which tank it was now. But they built it to a scale that suited built it to a size, sorry, that suited their moulds or their moulding technology at the time. And once they made it, they measured it and found it was 135th scale. <laughs> Literally, that's it. Um, no real rhyme or reason for it being that precise number. Pretty much everything else is in even numbers, so the maths is easier. Well, Tamiya being Japanese... They would work in metric anyway, or yeah, metric, so there might be other reasons behind it, but that is a story I heard anyway, that they just built the kit, then measured it and worked out the scale afterwards. There are larger scale armour kits, again, they're Tamiya do a range in 125th, I believe it is, it might be 124th, and there are also some 116th scale kits on the market, which to be honest are just massive. Um, I would probably like one in the future, but yeah, it's probably too big for my house, really. Now cars. Cars tend to come in a 124th or 125th scale. Now I'm th not entirely sure why there's a difference of one in the scales, this being a 124th scale Tamiya R390. Um, I'm not entirely sure, again, whether it's down to mould sizes or having certain parts already moulded, so tyres or wheels or whatever. And then if you get a larger car, uh, for example, you might get a 124th scale Mustang and a 125th scale Dodge Charger. Whether that's something to do with wheels or tyres already being moulded in a certain size and then... I just make the rest of the car slightly smaller to make the wheels and tires look bigger. I don't know. Um, but that's a slight strange. It's, just, it's only, I say, well, 125th of a difference in size. It's not really that noticeable unless you really know exactly what you're looking at. The other different scales of cars, you'll find 120th, which is generally the Formula One cars and 
indie cars, that kind of open wheel racing cars, which tend to be quite small. There will be some in slightly strange scales, like a 1 16th, I've seen a few in that. But the big scale for cars is 1 12th, uh, generally speaking. And Tammy do quite a few 1 12th. Uh, I think I do some Ferraris and Formula 1 cars in that scale. And they do build up to be quite large models. And <laughs> coincidentally that's also a radio control scale. So that's cars covered. You can have 124th or 25th, 120th, 112th. There's the occasional odd one in the middle. And if it's like an armoured car or something that was used in wartime, so for example a German staff car or you know a, a Russian lorry that was used to transport infantry and supplies, you'll find those in 135th and sometimes 148th, but if it's a non-military model, 124th, 25th, 120th or 112th is generally the case. Ship-wise, I don't have any ships, but again, with those, well, I say again, you do get completely different set of scales with your ships. Starting generally around about the 1 700th, uh, working up to 1 350th, which is probably the general main scale that ship builders like to build. And again, some smaller examples like the little uh, patrol crew, river patrol boats, the Pibbers. You can find those in 1 72nd, occasionally 1 35th, I think. Um, but generally, I say because of the sheer size of a battleship or an aircraft carrier, they tend to be in pretty small scales, and I'm not a fan. Uh, I say I've no idea why they chose N scales. It might just be because they fit in the box. Speaking of fitting in the box, sometimes you'll find certain subjects, and Revel, I'm looking at you here because I know you do this quite a lot, where you'll find, specifically uh, I've noticed with their Star Wars kits, the smaller ones, the quick kits, the easy kits, or whatever they call them, you'll find one will be in 156th, one will be in 128th or whatever. Now those are scaled that way because they have a box they want them all to fit in. Now, this is the size box these these models are going to go in so we have to scale the model to fit the box rather than scale the box to fit the model it, it's just one way it keeps things looking neater on the shelf in the shop easier to stack up now if we flip it around slightly to another branch of the hobby that is sometimes maligned or there's there's a bit of bad blood between the scale modelers and the war gamers um, I wouldn't say bad blood really, it's more differences of opinion. Because war game models are designed to be handled, bumped, bashed, picked up, put down, moved around, all that kind of stuff. They tend to be a bit more solid, um, less detailed or delicate. But scale wise, and this is an excellent example because it has them both written on the box. They tend to be a 156th scale, which is also referred to as 28mm scale. Now that is kind of a standard, uh, an industry standard Warhammer, Warhammer 40k, they're all 28mm scale, although they're getting a bit bigger these days to make the figures look more heroic. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's, it's just a size that works well for a tabletop means, I mean, could you imagine the size of a tabletop would be to have a war game in 135th scale? You'd need your entire living room floor probably. So in 156th you can get a decent size army, as it were, onto a tabletop. And the 28mm scale also as I say, is used in the figure. 
figure world, figure painting for the wargaming size figures. I believe some war games go down to a 15mm scale, which I'm not entirely sure what scale that would be. Probably somewhere around, no, it might be 176 Probably smaller than that, probably more about 100th. But you know, there's oh, not many of those around, and they are designed specifically for specific war games, so you would just buy the correct models for your game. When it comes to figures, however, there are a vast, well, a vast, um, there are different ways that they do them. There are, if you buy a tank, the figures, if it comes with figures, obviously they'll be in whichever scale the tank is. So in this case, Crazy Ivan with his polishing rag is in 135th. And you'll get the 148th, 172nd, 124th, depending on the size of kit they're meant to go with. So recently, Masterbox has released a line of um, marginally pervy girly figures to go with cars. Yeah. Can't blame them. It was a gap in the marketplace. So I would, if I built lots of cars, I would buy those models to put with them. Because I'm a dirty... <coughs> yeah, we'll, we'll leave that aside. And I won't get the only other figure I've got here out because she's rather rude and I'm trying to keep my uh, YouTube channel free from nude, nudity and swearing. Um, but they go generally, as I say, you've got your main model scales you know, for tank crews and dioramas and pilots and all that kind of thing. When it comes to just the few pure figure painting, you'll get generally they start around scale wise at 1 16th, and you get 1 12th, 1 10th, 1 8th, sometimes 1 6th. But more often than not, they're measured in millimetre. So there'll be a 75mm figure, a 120mm figure, a 200mm figure, or bust, or whatever. That doesn't necessarily mean that's how big the model is when it's finished. There's a 75mm figure, it's based on the scale of a, of a human, a standard now, six foot tall dude, let's say. So a 75mm female figure might be slightly shorter. A 75mm ogre figure would probably be over 100mm. It's... With the wargaming scales, they're based on the height of an adult human. So, there we go. Now, I'm hoping that's not been too much of a rambling mess, and somehow I've gone on for nearly 20 minutes here. This was supposed to be a quick five minute video, never mind, waffle. So, I hope that's cleared up any uh, confusions and not added to extra ones. Probably has, I think I've confused myself now. So with that, I will say enjoy your modelling, have fun, peace out, and rock on, and buzzy bye.